Ah, we're talking cornerbacks. I think that's what we're talking. All right, y'all hit that like button one time for the culture. Don't forget to subscribe either if you are new to the channel, man. As y'all can see, we like to have a lot of fun over here. All right, but uh, yes, it was the ESPN article, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes, here we go. Now I got it. Uh, ESPN, shout out to Jeremy Fowler, but uh, it was the top 10 cornerbacks heading into the 2024 season, and this is the list that is compiled. Uh, by execs coaches and scouts in the nfl and um yeah so i figured we'll react to this thing man but uh the number one rated corner was patrick sertan pat sertan the second shout out to pat sertan at number two they went with denzel ward too high cleveland browns way too high at number three sauce gardner new york jets at number four legerius sneed tennessee titans at number five, Jalen Ramsey. Hmm. At number six, Trent McDuffie. Number seven, Jair Alexander. Number eight, Jalen Johnson with the Chicago Bears. Number nine, Devin Witherspoon, Seattle Seahawks. Hmm. Number 10, Derek Steenley Jr. with the Houston Texans. Honorable mentions. Marlon Humphrey, Trayvon Diggs, A.J. Terrell, Charverius Ward, Christian Gonzalez, and Marshawn Lattimore. Hmm. Also receiving votes, though. Maybe not honorable mention, but also receiving votes. Deron Bland. Reek Woolen. Yeah, you got to have Deron Bland in there after last year. <laughs> I don't think he's that good, but five, you got, six yeah, is, come on, bro. You got to be thrown in there somewhere. J.C. Horn. With the Carolina Panthers, DJ Reed with the Jets, right, Darius Darius Slay with the Eagles, Jack Jones with the Raiders, Joey Porter Jr. with the Steelers, and then Martin Emerson Jr. with the Browns. All right, so how you feeling about this top ten list? A lot of good corners, but man, I'll tell you what. I wasn't expecting to come in here and try to, like, defend JPJ and get him into that top ten. Mm -hmm. But after seeing some of the names they got in there, it's like, why not? And that's, that's where I'm at with JPJ for this year. Though. I don't think yeah. he's that far off from being, like, solidly in that top ten or even potentially being a top five corner. You just got to keep up with what you were doing last year. But, man, I mean, what they have? Devin Witherspoon at nine? Mm-hmm. Like he's good. I like it's it's not a shot at him or anything, but maybe it's because I get to see JPJ game in and game out. But like yeah. he locked down the best receiver every week last year. The only hiccups with him were just the random penalties here and there. I mean, yeah. it'd, it'd be maybe one a game, but whoever it was, it was DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Devontae Adams. And this was whenever he wasn't playing as much early on right. in the season, but went up against Devontae Adams for some snaps and Devonte only got a slant on him mm -hmm. but all those guys even t like towards the end of the season going up against all those number ones uh who was who was it out in uh with la right wasn't he wasn't he Puka? yeah i don't remember him doing anything like jp he had a really good season man and mm -hmm. i mean you could look at all the stats you could look at all the chart all the all the things that uh point positively in the direction for jpj being in the top 10 like yeah. they're all out there like they really are it's just I guess he's he's not getting that recognition around the league from the execs and all that that I think he deserves. Like, I mean, if you're if you got like Marlon Humphrey up there, like even in the oh, and top the, uh, of the honorable, like mentions, the honorable mention, like, yeah. come on, I, I I can at least accept that. Yeah, but to get him in the others receiving votes, like that, we're talking in the twenties, yeah. right? That's way too low, way too low. Because this is why I they look have at it. Ten? Well, because this is I was gonna say before we even get to the ten. Of the honorable mentions, Marshawn Lattimore, Christian Gonzalez, Chavarius Ward, A.J. Terrell, Trayvon Diggs, Marlon Humphrey. I think the big argument would potentially be Christian Gonzalez. But I think if they're oh, just yeah, trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, the but if they're trying to do the benefit of the doubt, then the argument is he started week one. And he was playing man-to-man -man up until he got hurt. And he was playing whereas, good. Right, whereas JPJ did not start. But by the time he did get his opportunities, then he did produce. So it's kind of like 
what's the difference between you doing it at the beginning of the year, but for half a year, and you doing it at the end of the year, but for half a year. That's how I look at those two. Yeah, that's wild to me. No. That is what it is. I mean, a lot of these lists are jokes. I mean, I don't hate the list, though. Like you said, because all of these dudes are legit. They got Denzel Ward too high. I know you don't like Denzel because he plays in Cleveland. Let's see what, what, no, what, this, let's see what the people say about him. He's too high. So they like said, he, he's, he so, deserves to be in the top 10, but I think oh, two is way too high. I'm just reading what they say about him. His highest ranking in terms of votes received was a one. That's crazy. Yeah. But at the same time, going off what you said, his lowest ranking was a 10. Last year, he was ranked ninth. So said Ward makes the biggest jump in the rankings and what feels like a long overdue reaction. Part of what held him back is durability as he missed a, at least a few games every year. But not many uh, not many receivers are smoother. That, But not many receivers. Yeah, he missed that. Not many corners, what he meant to say, are smoother. 60, 63 targets. Ward allowed 31 receptions for 290 yards, zero touchdowns, and two picks, along with a 17.5% ball hawk rate. The percentage of targets where the nearest defender made a play on the football either passed or intercepted. All right. Shout out to the next gen stats on that one. That's a Cleveland stat for you. All right. Then he says he's fast, fluid with upper tier coverage skills and high football IQ. An NFL personnel evaluator said he can create ball production in man or zone, but can match up against just about any number one due to his size and speed. And he has the elite movement skills to cover in the slot when asked. Over six seasons, Ward has 15 picks, 99 PBUs, and three Pro Bowls. I always had three Pro Bowls, Dan. All right. Cleveland's top five defense broke uh, breakthrough under coordinator Jim Swartz has enhanced the profile of Ward and others on that defense. I was surprised they had him ready in front of Sauce. I ain't going to lie to you. Sauce yeah. Sauce number one, actually. Yeah, what they say about Sauce? So they said with Sauce, oh, they say he's a polarizing figure. Yeah. So this is what they said. It was like, who else had with his length and size can cover like him? And then another exec says, one of the most overrated players in the league. You could call holding on him every play. Fair enough. Okay. He's a physical corner. Yeah. Yeah. Then they talk about how teams aren't really throwing at him, and that's part of also why he's such a lockdown corner. But then you also bring up the holding stuff. So, yeah. yeah, I think Denzel's just a little too high. Yeah. Uh, How'd you feel about Witherspoon? I think well, that's that's my point. I mean, if he's in there, like JP should be talked about, like bottom top ten or you know eleven, twelve, or thirteen, something yeah. like that. I mean, because technically Not they 20s. gave him votes. He got votes, but are enough teams giving him those votes? And I think that's the different. I think that's a little bit different. Like. Somebody, enough people acknowledged him to but where he was receiving on, votes. He's even on the bottom of the Right. Receiver, you see what I'm saying? But enough people. But it's like you look at how many other DBs are on Darius Slay. Darius Slay is still getting votes. But Darius Slay, you also have legacy with him. Yeah, I was going to say he's slipping a you know what bit mean? recently. Right. But he's all the way down and just receiving votes. You said Deron Bland last year what he did. And he's just in receiving votes. <laughs> Ain't not honorable mention. Just receiving votes. Well, so that's what we say. JP, they they JP, know the Deron Bland season was an outlier. True, but we only have one season from JPJ, though. So that's why I'm like, I get the receiver votes. like, yo, I think it's respect, though. But to get Christian Gonzalez up there ahead of him and Devin Witherspoon, I mean, uh, yeah, maybe pick your poison or have yeah. your certain preference on something. I'm going to see what they but, said. Uh, with, Christian, with Christian Gonzalez, they said before his season came to an early end due to a shoulder injury, Gonzalez impressed with one interception, two pass breakups, and one quarterback hit in four games. Oh, he, he ain't play that much. I'd have him really high had he not gotten hurt last year. He's a stud, an AFC executive said. And then in terms of Witherspoon, they said Witherspoon wasted little time becoming a top player in the competitive NFC West. Seattle deployed him in a variety of ways from instinctive cover man, 16 pass deflections, to effective blitzer. Three sacks, eight tackles for loss. Fair. All right. Witherspoon is a baller, and AFC scout said he's the most physical corner in the NFL, and he's hyper competitive. Witherspoon's play earned him a Pro Bowl nod and a fourth place finish in the Defensive Rookie of the Year race. 
Yeah, where was JP? I think it wasn't he fifth or something. He was in the mix. Yeah. So that's all I'm saying. He should be in the mix. Yeah. Respect. For bottom top ten or top of the honorable mentions. Yeah. 11, 12, 13, whatever. Make you puss it together again this year? Yeah, that's I think he's fine. on his list. I, yeah, I, I, I know what I no see problem. from JP. Yeah. I, I think he is in that range already. It's just, not. yeah, now you got to do it again this year if you want to get yeah. into the elites. Because the rest of these dudes Step have it just up done a little it multiple bit. times. Yeah, maybe get yeah. rid of the holding call, maybe give us some splash plays. But if you mm-hmm. at least keep locking down the other team's top receiver, you're top 10. Yeah. You could do that on a week in and week out basis. Because, like, Marshawn Lattimore, we know who Marshawn Lattimore is. You're not going to talk the Saints without talking about him defensively. And he's been doing this thing for a while. We talk about Chavarius Ward. It's like he's been doing this thing for a while. AJ Terrell, four seasons. Half of it has been dope. Half of it has been a little bit rocky. But it's like Trayvon Diggs, Marlon Humphrey, just more experience of it, more exposure. But we've also seen more negative from those dudes also. So, that kind of, like I said, it kind of goes hand in hand. But with JPJ, hey, we're going to get a chance to see a lot more of him this year. So he responds the right way, man. He's going to jump up this list with no problem. 